It's the footy coach here. In the vibrant tapestry of life, sometimes the threads of sports, politics and tragedy are woven together in a way that leaves an indelible mark on history. In the 1980s and 90s, Colombia was a battleground where drug lords like Pablo Escobar fought a deadly war against the government and against other cartels. The nation faced a relentless wave of assassinations, political unrest and a climate of fear that permeated every aspect of daily life. For many people, football was an outlet. The Colombian national team was on the up and one of their rising stars was a centre-back hailing for Medellin, the gentleman Andres Escobar. An elegant centre-back, swift, good on the ball, a master of positioning, he was one of a number of stars that carried the hopes of a nation. By 1994 though, this would all be over and end in tragedy. This is the story of Andres Escobar. Born in 1967, a young Escobar discovered his love for football, kicking a ball through the narrow alleys of his neighborhood, and soon enough was brought to the attention of Atletico Nacional, who quickly signed him up and gave him the number two jersey. Nacional with a big side in Medellin, and the arrival of Francisco Maturano, one of their players from the 1970s, as the manager, would bring a revival to the Sleeping Giants. Andres was central to his team, becoming a symbol of Colombian football league excellence. His skillful defending and leadership on the pitch earned him admiration from fans not just in Colombia but across the continent too. He became the heart of the Colombian national team, representing a glimmer of hope for a nation desperate for positive narratives. As his star ascended, so did the chaos in Colombia. The 1980s and 90s were marked by a deadly dance between powerful drug lords like the notorious Pablo Escobar and the government forces struggling to maintain control. Chaos ensued in the country and the drug lords even got their hands into the football industry. The 1980s, America de Cali established themselves as the top team in Colombia, winning five titles in a row with murmurs of drug funding and they reached three Libertadores finals in a row too. At the same time, the rivals in Medellin, Atletico Nacional also rose to prominence, with many linking the club to being funded by Pablo Escobar. Colombian football was enjoying an epic rise. The club teams competed at a level on the continent that they'd never been able to achieve before. Maturana himself commented on the drug rumors by saying, the introduction of drug money into soccer allowed us to bring in great foreign players. It also kept our best players from leaving. Our level of play took off. Escobar played in defense alongside the veteran Luis Fernando Herrera with Rene Higuita, the flamboyant goalie behind them. Leonel Alvarez and Alexis Garcia dominated the midfield while John Jairo Trellez plundered the goals up front, leading to a dominant Nacional now team finally competing with the Millonarios and America de Cali. In 1989, Escobar and Nacional reached their ultimate goal, their Mount Everest, winning the Copa Libertadores, the first Colombian side to do so with a two-legged win on penalties against Olympia of Paraguay. Following on from that success, Nacional played Saki's all-conquering AC Milan in the Intercontinental Cup and were only beaten in the final minute of extra time. Escobar stood out in this game, holding off attack after attack as Milan struggled to break the deadlock, something that the Milan management would not forget. Maturan was also given the national team helm and helped Colombia qualify for the 1990 World Cup. This was their first time in 28 years and it was based on a core around his Nacional side. At the World Cup, this rising generation drew with eventual champions Germany before being knocked out by a Roger Miller inspired Cameroon after a mistake by Higuita in the last 16. Maturan left the team but would return two years later. Back in Colombia, the league was hit by an unprecedented scandal as a referee was assassinated on the orders of Pablo Escobar. This led to the league being cancelled. Colombian sides, Nacional accepted as they were holders, were also banned from continental competitions in 1990 by Conmebol as the drug lords started to bribe and threaten referees across the continent. In 1991, they were readmitted but could not play any matches at home in Colombia. As this went on, Andreas Escobar quietly went on with his role as a prominent defender in Colombian football, helping Nacional reach consecutive Libertadores semi-finals, only to be beaten by Olympia both times. Maturana's return as Colombia manager led to a third place finish at the Copa America in 1993 before the run-up to the World Cup in 1994. Colombia had qualified by finishing top of the Commonwealth standings without a defeat and a historic 5-0 win 
in Buenos Aires against the Copa holders Argentina. Expectations were high. This was an incredible squad, Colombia's golden generation. Andreas Escobar, wearing the iconic yellow jersey, was at the peak of his career. The world watched as Colombia aimed for glory on the biggest stage in football, with stars such as Valderrama, Higuita, Aristizabal, Rincon, Aspria, and Leonel Alvarez at the peak of their powers, an entire country expected a glorious tournament. Escobar himself was the captain, the leader, determined individual who all his team looked up to. But this was a Colombian team distracted by events back home. In December 1993, Pablo Escobar was killed by a combination of a rival cartel and Colombian government forces. This created even more turmoil, especially in Medellin. The first match at the World Cup was a humbling 3-1 defeat to a Hadji-inspired Romania. In the second match, this would prove to be a fateful night in Pasadena. Crucial match against the United States, Andres scored an on goal, giving the Americans a lead and the match finished 2-1 to the hosts, leading to Colombia's exit from the World Cup. The nation that once celebrated him now faced disappointment. The media and public scrutiny were relentless. Andreas became a scapegoat for Colombia's World Cup woes and his once adoring fans turned into his harsh critics. Final match against Switzerland, they won 2-0 but the golden generation had failed and Escobar was being hounded. He wasn't alone. During the entire competition, the squad and the management had been getting death threats. Their families had been threatened too. The players themselves said after the tournament that they played with paradise paranoia, worried about what would happen back home to their families. For these players to, to be playing under these conditions was really difficult. They were hailed as one of the favourites on the tournament and were going home in the group stages. Escobar being their captain and his own goal being one of the crucial moments in the tournament. Escobar returned to Colombia straight after the World Cup and on the 1st of July he decided to go out to a club called El Indio in Medellin with his friends. As they were in the club, everyone split up as often happens when you're partying. Maturana himself had tried to convince Escobar to stay at home but he said he wanted to show his face to his people and around 3 a.m. Escobar was alone in the parking lot in his car when four men appeared and started hurling abuse and homophobic slurs at him. Two took out handguns and one shot him six times in the back as he sat in his car. Killer shouted goal six times after each shot. One for each time the commentator had said it during the broadcast. 30 minutes later Andres Escobar was declared dead. Colombia lost one of its brightest stars that day. Its football team lost its hope and its golden generation started to disintegrate. A drug cartel bodyguard confessed to the killing a day later and was sentenced to 43 years in prison. There's no clear link to say it was the drug lords that had killed him but essentially with the lawlessness that had proliferated Colombian society, they were at fault. Escobar himself was due to sign for Milan that summer, the team that had seen his excellent skills firsthand and was no doubt about to embark on a successful career at the top of world football. 120,000 people attended his funeral. President of Colombia, Gabriel, spoke at his funeral too. This was a player loved by Colombians who chanted justice as the president gave his speech. These same fans still haven't forgotten him. His anniversary still commemorated at football games across the country. The city of Medellin unveiled a statue in his memory too. His murder tarnished the image of Colombia internationally. Escobar himself was known for being a leader, a humble defender and he's still held in high regard. In his last newspaper column after the World Cup and before his assassination he said, it's been a most amazing and rare experience. We'll see each other again soon because life does not end here but unfortunately it did. His death should be a reminder that in some places around the world societal turmoil can have a huge impact on sports. Story Story serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility of dreams and the harsh consequences of living in a world marred by violence. Andres Escobar was a brilliant footballer who was killed by his society. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe to the channel. Every little helps.